Alright everybody, if you'll notice my figure 8 puffer down there in the middle of his cave, he is going after a ram's horn snail that I threw in there. I did throw a few smaller pond snails in, uh, but the ram's horn is the one he's really interested in. Uh, I myself was curious to see how he would react to it. It is turned over so that the fleshy part is protected against the substrate and he can't seem to figure out how to get to it. So it's been driving him crazy and it's been interesting to watch. So that is something to pay attention to while I discuss a brackish tank. I've had a few people ask me recently if I could talk about how to set up a brackish tank. Now I don't do how-to videos and I don't do step-by-step -step instructional type videos but I can talk about a brackish tank and the animals that live in a brackish tank uh, in enough depth that by the end of the video you will be able to set your own tank up without any issues. So first of all, so that we're all on the same page, let's get some terminology sorted out. It might be splitting hairs or details, but it's important that we all know what we're talking about when we say terms like brackish water or brackish animal and that sort of thing, because not everybody knows. Uh, the term brackish really refers to the environment more than it does the animal. Uh, the term brackish fish is generally accepted, but it's not really 100% accurate. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. The brackish refers to the water. And what brackish water is, is water that has a specific gravity or a salinity above that of fresh water, but not yet high enough to be considered marine water. So in simple terms what that is in nature is where freshwater rivers or estuaries flow out into the ocean and you get this mixing of water. You get this sort of salty-ish water but it's not salty enough to be marine water or ocean water yet. That is considered brackish water and there's a range of salinity that falls within brackish water. Um, in terms of specific gravity, it is measured at pure water is 1.000 and as the salinity of the water or the density of the water increases because of the dissolved solids, that number slowly climbs. So once you get above 1.005, you have gone from fresh water and now you are in the very low end of the brackish range. Uh, I keep this tank around 1.008 to 1.010, so I'm in the medium low end of the brackish range. Once you get up to 1.018, just under 1.020, uh, that's really the upper end of brackish and you're getting into the low end of marine animals at that point. So that's what brackish water actually refers to. It's sort of salty, but not salty enough to be marine water in the most simplistic of terms. Now, the animals that live in that are known as urihaline animals. Uh, uri meaning wide range and haline having to do with the salinity. And that means these are animals that are able to live in a wide range of salinity. Um, a stenohaline animal is an animal that lives in a narrow range of salinity. Now that could be either a marine animal or a freshwater animal. It simply means that it cannot go from one degree of specific gravity to another very rapidly without a lot of distress. Usually it will kill the animal if you shift it outside of its normal range. It's a very narrow range of specific gravity. The urihaline animals, or what are commonly referred to as brackish animals, brackish fish, are animals that, while I'm not going to get into the details of how they do it, they have the capacity to adjust for external salinity of the water very, very rapidly. So they can go from fresh water all the way up to marine water without a lot of stress. Um, Certain fish are considered brackish fish, I'll say, like this figure eight puffer and these bumblebee gobies. Now, they are urihaline animals, and they can indeed go in fresh water, and they could indeed go in marine water. But most animals have a salinity that their body is most comfortable at. Once you start moving them either up or down the scale, their body has to start working harder to adjust for that. Now, again, it's capable of doing that, but it's taking its toll. So if you take an animal like the animals we're looking at that are sort of most comfortable in this low end brackish, 
and you put them in fresh water, it takes its toll. They can live in it for a fair length of time. I've heard of figure eight puffers living for a few years in fresh water, but it's a fish that should live 15 years, not two or three. You know, they, they can't live long term outside of their comfort zone, I'll call it. The same with marine. You couldn't put a figure eight puffer in a marine tank and expect it to live a full life. That's just too salty for it. It could live in it for quite a while, whereas if you put a freshwater fish in a marine tank, it would be dead within minutes. It just couldn't tolerate the salt at all. Uh, a urihaline animal would be able to deal with it for a significant period of time, uh, months, maybe even a year or more, before it would finally just expend too much energy and it could not stay in that. So, urihaline animals can move through a great deal of salinity, but they still have a place where they're comfortable with. So when you see figure eight puffers sold as freshwater fish, they're not. They're fish that can go in freshwater, but they really should be in brackish water. I honestly, I feel the same about mollies. I really believe the mollies should be in low end brackish water, not freshwater. Uh, they do much, much better in brackish water than they do um, in freshwater. And all of your live bearers, even guppies, platies, uh, variatus, all of those are urihaline animals. You can actually put uh, mollies all the way up into marine water without any issue at all, and hence you have your quote saltwater mollies. They're just mollies. They're mollies that have been put in salt water, and they're now called saltwater mollies. Um, it's just that they're urihaline animals. They can shift salinity without any stress at all. So when you're setting up your tank, I've heard a lot of people go through a lot of effort to um, acclimate their fish. They brought a figure eight puffer home from freshwater, you know, from a big chain store or something that was selling it as a freshwater animal, and they're working it up into their brackish tank, and they're doing these little tiny increments once a week. They're raising it like bring it home and do your 20 minute drip to acclimate it to your water and put it right in the brackish water. That's all you have to do. They can go from fresh water to brackish water without batting the proverbial eyelash. It, it, no, no sweat, no problem at all. They're, that's what they're built to do. In the environment they live in, if it's a rainy day or if they swim upstream or if they swim past an inflowing river, they go from you know one specific gravity to a next as part of the normal course of their day in a lot of time, you know, a lot of cases, depending on the animal. These animals are built to do that. So you don't have to worry about really taking a lot of time to shift or acclimate your animals. It's kind of funny, everybody seems to go the wrong way about it. They take their urihaline animals that can go from one extreme to the other in a bat of an eyelash, and they take weeks to acclimate them, yet they'll take freshwater fish that are really do need some time to adjust to water and they'll do a 20 minute drip and call that acclimation even though they had, you know, it takes weeks for their body to really shift to a new environment, you know. So the urihaline animals are not an issue when you do that. Uh, when you set your tank up, all you've got to do is set it up the same way you'd set up a freshwater tank. The um, Nitrifying bacteria that live in the tank is the same species, so if you've got another tank and you want to do a little starter batch of culture or you want to buy like a quick starter culture kit, you use the exact same stuff you would use in your freshwater tank. Uh, you don't need a protein skimmer or anything like that. It's not set up like a saltwater tank at all. It's set up very much, imagine if you're doing an African cichlid tank and you're having to mix up your Epsom salts and things like that and have your little reservoir of water so you've got your hard water. This is the exact same thing, you just need to use marine salts instead of Epsom salts. You just buy your Instant Ocean or Red Sea or whatever you prefer. I use Instant Ocean myself. Um, you set up your reservoir, you get your water set up to the specific gravity you want it, and you keep your, you know, your water ready for when you do a water change, and you treat it exactly the same way you treat uh, any other tank. You would just simply do a water change and filter changes as needed, and that's really about all there is to it as far as setting up and ma you know, maintaining it. Um, really the mystery is about the animals and the way they need to be handled, and they really are 
animals that are able to bounce around quite a bit. So if you're doing a water change and you know you ran out of salt or something and you got to do a five gallon water change but all you have is fresh water, go ahead and do it. It's not going to hurt the fish at all. Uh, next time you do a water change, go back to your normal salinity and then you know the tank might still be a little lower until you've done two or three water changes and it'll bring it back up to where you like it to be. Won't hurt your fish a bit. It won't bother them at all. Um, I, I use RO water. I recommend using RO water to set up your, um, you know, your reservoir and to, to mix your water and to mix your marine salts in with. Uh, it's not really necessary though. That's really critical if you've got a marine tank because the animals, again, being stenohalian animals, are very, very sensitive to the amount of dissolved solids in the water. So when you're doing a marine tank, you want to know exactly how many dissolved solids you're putting in there. You're measuring those salts, you want to put it into very pure water, so only the salts you've put in there is what's going in the water. By nature of these urihaline animals that I keep going on about that can go from a wide range of salinity, if you're using your tap water and then you're mixing your marine salt in with it, you know, you might have a little more dissolved solids in there than you expected to because it's tap water and it's got some iron or something like that. But they're urihaline animals, so if the specific gravity is a little higher than you expected it to be, it's simply not going to make that big of a deal in the long run. You just do your you know, water changes like normal and everything should be fine. Again, I still recommend using the RO, but if you've got to use tap water and you don't have, you know, ridiculously hard tap water or tap water that for some reason, you know, would prohibit you from using it, um, you can use it for a brackish tank. That's not really out of the question. Um, I don't really know what else to go over uh, as far as setting it up and maintaining it. I definitely have had issues with the red cyanobacteria. I don't know why, but it's only been in this tank, so it is possible that the salts um, allow that to grow better. So if your tank gets contaminated with it, you might have more issue with it than you would in a freshwater tank. Um, but again, that's only if your tank gets contaminated with the red cyanobacteria. It doesn't just magically appear in your tank. You've got to get it in there somehow. Uh, I have, I've had it in this tank ever since I set it up. It's been in there forever, and I've always just fought with it and struggled with it, and I've never been able to fully eradicate it. It always comes back. So that's why I've given up. I'm just going to set up a whole new tank and really, really do my best not to <laughs> cross-contaminate it when I move everything over. But I'm going to be setting up the new tank with plants in it, and I'm going to do it a little differently when I set it up, and I'm going to do that to adjust for the plants. And so the next video I do, we're going to talk about plants in a brackish tank because that's something a little different. So I hope that made some sense. I hope I didn't ramble and wander around too much. I really feel like I was getting stuck in a groove for a while there. Uh, so I hope that helped. I hope that made a little more sense and made a little more understandable. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions or any, you know, any requests for any further videos that might help explain something that I stumbled over or something like that. So thanks for watching this one. Please subscribe so you don't miss anything else I got coming up. And I'll see you real soon in the next one.